If you're dealing with slow Outlook performance, bloated profiles, or Teams login issues, then stick around because today we're going to dive into Office Containers for FS Logix, a game changer for virtual desktop users. If you're new here, welcome to the Virtual Mac YouTube channel, where we cover the latest news around Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Nerdio, Intune, and much more. In today's video, we're going to talk about Office Containers for FS Logix. So this is more applicable for Azure Virtual Desktop users, but by the end of this video, you're going to know the answer to the following questions. Number Number one, what are Office containers? Number two, how do they boost performance? Why you should be using them? And number four, maybe some downsides because it's not for everyone. So you'll know exactly how to reduce login times, streamline Office 365 apps, and create a seamless user experience in your virtual desktop environment. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe for more tech insights, and let's jump right in. First of all, let's take a look and see what these Office containers actually are. I'm just gonna refer you to the Microsoft documentation. As you can see here, the FH Logix Office Containers, or ODSC as they explain it, are a subset of the, the, to the profile container that are used to redirect specific Microsoft 365 app data into a VHD. You've got your normal profile container, right, which is, contains everything, and then you can split this off into a separate Office profile container, okay? Now, why would you want to do this? Normally people want to do this because it helps keep the normal profile container clean, right? Um, because a lot of your data within your FS profile could be down to office settings. So think about your OST file, um, think about your uh, Teams cache file, think about your SharePoint data. Most of this data that actually sits within the office container is actually just cache. The, your virtual desktop will perform perfectly fine without it. So if that gets reset or if it's a problem with it, it's not a problem, right? Because for example, you would just re-download your OSD file or you would just repopulate your Teams cache or something. So I would say it's non-critical data, whereas something within your profile, right, is critical. Yeah, so, because um, that contains stuff like your shortcuts and your customized settings. So basically, if you reset your user's profile, they'll know about it. If you reset the office profile, they probably won't even notice. Maybe it'd be a bit slower while it re recache everything, um, but from a usability perspective, um, things would continue, right? So basically, what we're going to do today's video, um, we're going to go through all these things. So we're going to show you how to enable it. We're going to verify the location. I'll show you what it looks like from a story perspective on the back end. Then we'll go through these settings, show you what they are, right? Um, and then we'll look at those and we'll do some quick testing um, just to see what things look like. All right, so let's look at the console and see what we need uh, first. The first thing we need to do is create a separate storage account or a separate file share. For redundancy, probably suggest a separate storage account if you can, because that helps with the capacity. So for the sake of testing, I just use an existing storage account, but just with a, a different file share. So I'm just going to flick over to my screen. So just as a demo purposes, I'm using Nerdio. And I'll show you what I've done. But basically what I've done within Nerdio is I've just selected to configure a separate container. For, for Office, and these are the paths to this separate container. As you can see here, I'm using CloudCache as well. That's why I've got two separate locations, but normally what I recommend is you have a completely separate storage account and a completely separate file share. The whole point of having the Office container is to stop you having issues with your existing profile. So for example, you could run out of storage or there could be an issue with that specific storage account. Separating the Office container from the profile basically means that if there's a problem with the Office Container Profile, i.e. it gets full, that, that's the most common cause, then it's not gonna cause your normal profile to break. And because when your normal profile breaks, then you have a big issue, you may not be able to log on, uh, your programs might not start up properly, and that completely separating out this profile basically helps with that. And then if I need to reset Office Profile, it's not too much impact for a user, whereas if, if, if I reset the main profile, it's quite a big impact um, for the user. So if we have a quick look in here and see the documentation to enable it, right? Um, now, obviously, we'll, we'll configure this by Intune, so we'll show you how to do this shortly in Intune. Uh, essentially, we need to configure these register settings, which is what essentially I'm doing with it earlier. Um, but basically, we configure the enabled, yeah. So that's so. This is the FS Logics ODFC, right? So that's the difference as well. In your normal one, you wouldn't have that. So we can set that to enable, and then we've got a different 
a few different settings we can configure here as well. The flick flock directory name, that's just the naming conventions. We recommend you put that to include teams. We definitely want to include teams within our profile. It means that all the team settings that we've got um, will roam with the user when they log on to other session hosts. These recommended settings uh, you should uh, include as well. And then obviously size in megabytes. So that's the maximum um, storage size and VHD locations. So that's the name of the location. Are the where we're going to hold our VHD file. So what we're going to do now is I'll show you how to configure this within Intune. Then we'll have a look and see what that looks like. Now, there's some additional settings here that you can have as well. You can exclude certain stuff from the profile we've got, including Office activation. So you, you definitely want that. Include OneDrive, OneNote, Outlook Personal Session, SharePoint, Skype, Teams. If you don't want certain applications to be included within the Office profile, you can just set these to disabled or enabled. Now we're going to head over to the Intune portal and then we're going to have a quick look and see how you can figure that within Intune. And then we'll actually log on and see what this looks like from a user perspective. Because obviously the user won't really notice anything. It's essentially what's going on under the hood. Uh, which is interesting. All right, so I'm in the Intune portal. So we're now going to configure the Office Container Cache within Intune. So if I just flick over to my other screen, all I've done is go into device configuration. And then I've got an existing profile called FS Logics AVD settings. So you can see here, I'm just editing the existing one and we're in the settings picker. All we're going to do is search for FS Logics. Just type in FS Logics and that'll bring back all the FS Logics configuration settings that we can configure. The one that we're after is the ODFC containers. Obviously, I configured this stuff by Nerdio, but I just want to show you how you would do it without Nerdio using Intune. This is the existing one that we normally pick. The ODFC containers one is definitely the one that we want to configure if you want to use Office containers. Okay, you want to select that to enabled, right? First of all, and then you can see here, you can see which ones you want to include. We go to include Office activation, include OneDrive, OneNote UWP, Outlook personalization, SharePoint, we don't want to go. Um, Teams definitely want that one. Um, yes, we want it to be a dynamic VHD, so that will basically um, expand the size of it. These are the recommended settings that you saw earlier um, in that Microsoft KB article, um, so you'd implement those um, as well. And then we've got mirror local OST to, to VHD, number of VHDs to keep. We can configure Outlook cache mode as well. Prevent logging with failure. So basically that means if there's a problem with the profile, do we want it to prevent login? I'm not going to select that because it's just the office cache, right? So I'm not too bothered if there's a problem with it because it'll just repopulate on there as well. So you can see there's quite a lot you can configure here as well. The size of it, VHD access mode, location. I'm not going to go into too much detail around all those. There's lots of Microsoft documentation on those, but for the sake of simplicity, you just configure the settings here as well. And then you just click apply and save that to your AVD session hosts. And that's literally all you have to do. This is for AVD single session or multi-session, mostly multi-session, um, um, but I'd recommend doing this for your AVD multi-session hosts. So that's how you configure it with Intune. Just read the Microsoft best practices guide around what you need to configure. But for most scenarios, you just get away with configuring these simple settings here. And then for these settings, just put the Microsoft recommended settings that we had in earlier. All right, so that's enough of looking at the uh, documentation. Let's actually see what this looks like. All right, so we are logged on to the VM. As you can see here, I've, I've launched Outlook and I've also got OneDrive configured. If I just go on to here, you can see OneDrive and I put some documents in, into OneDrive as well. So. Basically, if we just go back to the file and the folder, so here you can now see two separate files, right? We can see a profile, which is the normal profile, and then we can see this ODFC. So that's the Office container. Anything containing Outlook, Teams, OneDrive, they're going to go into this folder, and then the normal profile stuff will sit inside the profile folder. As you can imagine, as I mentioned, if you've got a lot of Office data, that will massively help, right? Um, because instead of filling up this, it will just fill up this instead. So it's a much better user experience um, if you've got a large file. Outlook OST files, and they can easily sometimes 10 gigs. You're going to save 10 gigs on your profile folder and you massively minimize the risk of your profile folder from being filled up and because all the large office cache data is going to be put into a separate container. Therefore, you, you run, run less risk in your environment. For me, the biggest benefit is the the minimization of the risk that you are going to fill up your profile. 
um, because the office data is just cached data um, it's not needed it can be re-downloaded um, the other benefit that you're going to see is around performance yeah um, because if you're using separate storage accounts and separate file shares you're essentially splitting that performance so obviously office data and teams can have a lot of IOPS impact especially with office OSD files so if you're separating that out from your your profile as well that could also lead to to better performance for example if you get an impacted performance for the office data only the users would see performance impact if they're using office applications outside of office the the performance impact would be fine that you wouldn't really notice the difference but obviously if everything was contained in that one profile everything was being read and written from that profile and that was getting performance impacts for that storage the user is going to get a slow impact on everything if they try to open a file if they try to open google chrome it's going to be really slow for them rather than just being within outlook okay all right that's that so what are the downsides right so i've talked very much about the upsides um but what are the actual downsides uh, of using the solutions? First downside is increased storage requirements. Rather than having one storage account, you, you're now going to have times two storage accounts. So, for example, you've got 10 house balls, you may now have 20 different storage accounts um, that you need to manage as well. So, that's a bit of added overhead and potential cost as well. In theory, the cost shouldn't impact too much because we're still going to be managing the same amount of data right it's just we're splitting the data into two separate portions but it means that we've got increased storage requirements we need to create more storage accounts and therefore it makes the environment a bit more complicated which leads into the second one sort of complexity in management and troubleshooting right if you're troubleshooting an issue around performance for example or corruption we've now got two separate vhdx files that we need to troubleshoot with and so it makes the troubleshooting a bit more difficult as a lot of you are aware i'm a very keep it simple kind of guy the simpler things are for me the less things that can go wrong and this is one of these scenarios where we're adding complexity into the environment so if we're not going to gain much from doing it then it's probably not much worth enabling it but if you do have a situation where you're office cache is quite large and you are consistently running into problems where your profiles are filling up and getting full this is a great solution that's the exact scenario that this was designed for if you don't have that much office data cache maybe you're quite with your office data then you may gain no benefit from using the solution and therefore you're just going to add unnecessary complexity um, within the environment as well and um, the last one is potential performance bottlenecks right because obviously because we've got more storage accounts more complexity um you may not as put you may not put as much effort into sizing um those sort of, sort of storage accounts so you may hit performance issues because we haven't thought about it that much um so again if the underlying storage is slow it's going to increase it's going to have a, a decrease settings and that may also add complexities because if a user is reporting all oh, their outlooks just slow or their their teams is slow or their OneDrive is just slow the last thing someone's going to think about is storage right they're going to start looking at everything else it just adds complexity and makes makes troubleshooting um a bit harder an alternative approach to all this if you don't require cached outlook or cast OneDrive, you can just dis disable office containers rely on profile containers and do outlook in online mode or OneDrive in online mode but speaking from experience that doesn't really give a great experience um, because we're using online only mode uh, outlook specifically is really bad um, it takes a good 10 seconds or so to start reading emails which is not a great solution for users um, that's it really for this video just wanted to explain what an office cache is when you would use it and the impact of using it personally when i'm working with customers i don't normally recommend it right i would only recommend it if profiles are getting really, really big uh, my philosophy always has been keep it simple um, and this solution just adds complexity but as i mentioned there are scenarios um, where it would be a, a good solution uh, and, and solve potential problems leave a comment below to let me know if you use the office cache what your experience is using the office cache um, and yeah i will see you next week all right thanks very much bye, -bye. <laughs>